It gives me great pleasure to introduce this, the third annual report of the Aberdeen Economic Policy Panel. My thanks go to authors Dr Hannah Morsey, Dougie Peedle and Professor Graham Roy for casting an expert eye over the Aberdeen City Region's economic performance and for pointing the way to our continuing prosperity in these uniquely challenging times. Although the views in the report are those of the panel, the assistance of Aberdeen City Council officers, numerous external stakeholders and local industry is also greatly appreciated. I think it's safe to say our world is a very different place to a year ago. The emergence of COVID-19 has prompted an economic reset right across the globe. Consider too that before the coronavirus swept the country, Aberdeen had been rocked by the downturn in the dominant oil and gas industry. The low oil price, currently trading at around $40 per barrel, continues to pose a fresh challenge to the region's energy sector. Since the last report, demands on the public sector have increased while funding has reduced. Despite these challenges, we are committed as always to secure investment and ultimately improve outcomes for the people and place of Aberdeen. We have also made significant progress in implementing the recommendations in the two preceding policy panel reports. In response to the recommendation to quickly identify a regional approach to combating climate change, we have produced a net zero vision for Aberdeen and a strategic infrastructure plan for energy transition. The themes highlighted from the energy transition through to diversification and skills remain even more crucial to the long-term economic success of the region. Today's report offers a, a welcome vote of confidence in our approach and offers up new areas of exploration whilst leaving zero room for complacency. There is no doubt COVID-19 has accelerated the need to future-proof our economic success for the next generation and beyond. In response to the acute problems created by COVID, the Council developed a socio-economic rescue plan to help keep businesses solvent and buoy the local labour market. Our Spaces for People project has allowed the safe reactivation of our city centre to take place. Despite tough trading conditions, investment continues in the North East, in physical and social infrastructure, in energy and hospitality, as well as new industries such as the digital and creative sectors. The private sector evidently still has faith in the Aberdeen city region. As a council, we have continued to demonstrate the same commitment by providing skills training, delivering homes for key workers and investing in the public realm. Our economic prosperity is being further challenged by the impact of COVID-19, but I am confident we'll come through this short term challenge and continue on our economic and environmental transition journey. Hello, um, this is the third annual report of the Aberdeen Economic Policy Panel. It comes at a time of significant global economic challenges. The world is currently facing a crisis like no other. The pandemic has resulted in tragic loss of human lives across the globe. Moreover, the quarantines and social distancing restrictions required to contain the pandemic have led to sharp falling economic activities. As a result, the global economy is expected to suffer a recession of 4.4% in 2020, which is the worst downturn since the Great Depression. The UK has particularly been hit and is expected to have a contraction of over 10% in 2020. So what are the implications for the region? Well, the region faces multiple shocks, 
a health shock due to COVID, but also this is further compounded by oil price shock, supply chain disruptions, and lockdown and restrictions um, impact on reducing economic activities. As a result, the impact of the crisis has been broad-based across sectors. And Google mobility data, as the, this graph shows, uh, indicates a huge fall in mobility, apart from residential areas and parks. M much of the retail activities have actually shifted online. The shift away from traditional retail is a trend we have been seeing in recent years, which has accelerated as a result of the pandemic. So what has been done in response to the crisis? UK government implemented an unprecedented rescue package, both in scale and coverage. This included one of the most generous furlough schemes among OECD countries, as well as a temporary cut in VAT for the hospitality sector and a mortgage holiday for homeowners. Businesses have also benefited from the range of support schemes available from different tiers of governments, including the Scottish government. At the local level, City Council developed a socio-economic rescue plan to provide support to businesses as well as support for labour market and well-being responses. The Council also responded to a huge rise in demand for services, particularly around support for rental costs, financial assistance and advice, free school meal entitlement, educational support, and homelessness. All these measures that have been taken helped avoid sharper rise in unemployment, but we see warning signs emerging. The, as this chart shows, the number of recipients of the universal credit in Aberdeen City had more than doubled from April to September 2020, reflecting both, both a rise in unemployment, but also a decline in incomes. This was actually greater than what was seen across the rest of Scotland and the UK. What does all this mean going forward? Well, the outlook remains highly uncertain with significant risks uh, on the downside if the spread of the virus continues to rise sharply, then the outlook could be much more challenging. On the upside, however, the recent news of a vaccine becoming available in the near future can further help growth recovery. Um, it's important, however, to keep in mind that Aberdeen economy must prepare for a challenging time ahead. Recovery is likely to be gradual, slow, and building resilience will be key. Protecting jobs and livelihoods is, is the appropriate uh, immediate priority. And it's important not to lose sight of the long-term drivers, such as diversification, infrastructure, investment and skills, and the transition to net zero, in order to ensure green, sustainable, and more resilient recovery. And these long-term drivers are the areas that so my colleague Graham will be discussing in more detail. To Graham, thank you. So as Hanan said, COVID-19 has turned key aspects of our normal day-to-day -day activity on its head. But one of the things that we emphasize in the report is that we believe it would be a mistake to take our eye off the long-term opportunities and challenges that face the region, or to actually reflect away from the progress that's been made in recent times. So instead of starting again, what we emphasize in the report is that COVID-19 stresses the importance of delivery and increasing the pace of that delivery. There's clear value in prioritization and co-creation of solutions with the business community, skills providers, and the third sector in a broader spectrum as, as possible. So rather than thinking up lots of different new strategies and new ideas, 
what we're urging is a clear route map for change in key areas of focus that have been in our recommendations in previous reports. So including the all important trans transition to net zero. So what is what are the steps on that route map to change? What are the key milestones that need to be met? What are the key opportunities? And how do we actually increase the pace and the urgency at which we deliver on these objectives? Now, of course, Aberdeen can't achieve all these ambitions on its, on, on its own. It needs to be a collective effort across the business community, but also all tiers of government too. So we talk in the report about the important contribution that the Scottish government and the UK government can make um, in ensuring that Aberdeen delivers on its success. So what are the priorities that we emphasize? And these will be very familiar to people who've read our previous report. So crucially, the, the importance of diversification. So reprioritizing the Aberdeen and Northeast economy. So one of the most successful parts of the UK economy, diversification away into important new sectors where growth and opportunity exists. So in sustainable tourism and food and drink, life sciences and digital. And it's also about supporting the energy transition too. So turning Aberdeen into the genuine energy capital of Europe, not just the oil and gas capital, but the genuine energy capital too. And that requires diversification into different forms of renewable energy, but also into wider aspects of the low carbon economy, while also ensuring that oil and gas can make an important contribution to the Northeast and the UK economy over the next few decades. We also talk about the importance of focusing on areas where improve the resilience to shocks. So the fundamentals of what make an economy and a regional economy successful around skills, around infrastructure and the like. And also the importance of focusing upon robust financial planning. We know that local government budgets are going to be in a tough position going forward. We knew that before COVID-19, but with the enormous increase in public indebtedness we've seen in response to the crisis, that means that those challenges are only going to get more significant in the years to come. But one of the other key areas that we emphasise in this report, which is a bit more emphasis than we've perhaps said in the past, is about the importance of Aberdeen the Place as being a key driver of the future economic development and success of the region. Now, city centres across the world are being impacted by COVID-19, and it's going to leave a whole host of different legacy effects, whether that be shifts to home working, with implications for things like commercial property, but also challenges for core sectors that cities depend upon, such as traditional retail, as we've all switched to online purchases. And getting a clear plan for how you respond to these challenges in the Northeast is going to be absolutely crucial. And in many ways, Aberdeen is no different from many other cities in the fact that it faces these challenges and the future of where cities might, um, might change and might evolve into. But crucially, Aberdeen also has key successes, which you can build upon, you know, attract us as, as a place to, to live and work. You know, I think many of us are now going to value in the future the importance of well-being and quality of life and quality of where you live, much more so than perhaps we've done in the past. So that provides an opportunity for Aberdeen in facing the challenges about what cities might be in the future to think about, well, actually, how can Aberdeen position itself as a city where people want to come and live, you know, grow a family to invest in? And a lot of that will be really crucial around the importance of Aberdeen the place and making Aberdeen an attractive place to come and to live and work. So they're the broad themes that we cover in the report today. And what, I will, what I'll do now is hand over to Dougie, who will talk in specifics about the recommendations that we make. Thanks, Graham, and thanks, Hanan. I think these recommendations draw particularly on what Graham and Hanan have said uh, this year, both in terms of the economic context and the uncertainty that we face at this point in time, uh, but also very much Graham's points around building for the long term and looking to that long term uh, picture and that long-term transformation. So th if there's one recommendation to take from this year's report, it's the first recommendation, and that is that we're advising that Aberdeen develops a new route map for the transformation of Aberdeen the place. So that's really taking that long-term view, identifying what Aberdeen wants to, and, uh, wants to and how it wants to present itself uh, to the wider uh, community in terms of what it offers as a place to live, as a place to work, uh, and ultimately a place to invest as well. Now, 
that route map is obviously going to take time to develop. Uh, it's going to have a number of waypoints in terms of uh, before you get to that final destination. But we think there's a number of key ingredients that need to be in that route map. And that's the basis of our previous uh, of our recommendations that we've touched on previously as well. And we make no apology for that, that at this point in time, uh, it's really important to take on that long term view and also build on what we've already seen in Aberdeen, all the positive developments that are there and take those forward and really just yes maybe reposition slightly but continue to build for that future so the other recommendations talk around a number of issues first off uh, diversification and how important that is for an economy like Aberdeen that has been very dependent on the energy sector and is going to need to diversify away from that that's only been heightened by the COVID-19 crisis and the need to build back resilience as well so to build on that approach that's been there, build on the growth sectors that have been identified, but also look wider to see what other opportunities there are to diversify and build in that resilience. Thirdly, uh, in terms of technology, lots of uh, stuff has been done within the city region deal around digital uh, investment and the digital infrastructure. We only have to look at how we're doing uh, this year's presentation to understand that the use of technology uh, has an opportunity to create new change new things and new opportunities and it's going to be vital to underpin that future for Aberdeen the place with the right digital infrastructure. I don't think we can emphasize enough uh, in our last report we talked about the need to move quickly on net zero within Aberdeen to identify Aberdeen's position and I think all the developments in the last 12 months just serve to say that, 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 pay, that the pace of that change has got to pick up, we've got to build on the really positive things that we've seen happen in Aberdeen in the last 12 months, but also just look beyond the renewable energy sector, really important aspect of net zero without a doubt for Aberdeen, but also need to think about businesses within Aberdeen, how they can move to low carbon activities and also Aberdeen the place, you know, what, what does it deliver for people in terms of low carbon solutions around living, about traveling, about do, going to work, all these, all these things are absolutely invite, vital for Aberdeen uh, in the future. And if it's to compete as a place to attract business uh, and people. Graham has already touched on the importance of skills. I don't really need to go into any great detail. COVID has had a significant impact on people. We're still to see what the real impacts are going to be, but we know Young people have been adversely affected. We know that unfortunately people are likely to lose their jobs. So updating the approach to skills is going to be vital as things unfold in the months and years ahead. Also, now is a good time to reassess infrastructure plans. Got to build on all the positive developments that we've seen in Aberdeen, but also maybe look beyond traditional economic infrastructure. What do we think about in terms of Aberdeen as uh, social infrastructure, the natural infrastructure, all these things that are really important for Aberdeen the place and what are the priorities between that economic, human, social and natural infrastructure and how is Aberdeen going to identify itself uh, in the future on these issues. If we turn now to the, the city and we heard from a whole range of stakeholders and we've seen in other cities as well, Aberdeen is not alone about the impact on city centres from the current crisis, both in terms of uh, retail, use of retail space, office space, the impact on hotels and city centres, all massive changes that are taking place in a very short pace of time. Uh, and we certainly think that now is a good time to do more strategic thinking about Aberdeen city centre, how it's going to evolve, how it's going to make use of what space is freed up, and quite critically, you know, how the master plan can be adjusted to take all that into account. A lot of what we're saying here is really about quality of life. Uh, and I think we've put a particular recommendation in about quality of life just to emphasize that point. Graham mentioned the importance of well-being and thinking about all the things that impact on people's lives. Well, we put a particular recommendation in there to make sure uh, that we identify the priorities for investing in the quality of life in Aberdeen going to be vital again for Aberdeen the place going forward and something that's just worth that recommendation by itself. We need to think about connectivity as well and that recommendation nine talks about improving connectivity in Aberdeen but not just 
uh, in a traditional sense in terms of transport connectivity, which is also going to be really important uh, given Aberdeen's position and given the need for transport links to the rest of to other economic centres in the UK. It's also going to be really important to think about connectivity in terms of how people are going to work in the future. If there's going to be more working from home, digital work, is Aberdeen capable to deliver that? But also connectivity with the other economic centres in a partnership way, other partnership opportunities as well. On the next couple of recommendations, I won't spend a lot of time on them. They're fairly self-evident given the change that we've seen. In time, it's going to be right to refresh the existing regional economic strategy. We know that work's already gone on in terms of positioning the vision. That's all really positive. And what we would say is that that you know, refresh will need a clear focus on implementation uh, and ideally smart objectives. Financial planning that has been undertaken by the City Council uh, has been very welcomed by the panel. It directly meets our previous recommendation. And that sets the framework for a discussion around local government finances in Aberdeen, what's going to happen at the national level, and also that ongoing issue about how can local areas have the flexibility and the financial mechanisms to meet the challenges that are ahead and the flexibility that they need. Finally, I'll just touch on what I think is a really important strength in Aberdeen, and it's just important it does not get lost uh, given crisis that we've been through, given the fact that it's impacted on different business sectors, different people in different ways. And that is just that as Aberdeen goes forward, hopefully developing this route map for Aberdeen as a, as a place that we think really hard about making sure all stakeholders are involved and that ultimately Aberdeen can't do this alone. There needs to be close working with the UK and Scottish governments building on those relations that already exist. Today's economic policy panel report emphasises the importance of the Aberdeen city region playing in a pivotal role in the transition to green energy. Delivering the necessary infrastructure as well as low carbon technologies can increase our economic as well as environmental resilience. We have developed a net zero vision that will safeguard skills, create jobs for our young people and retain and attract new talent and investment here in Aberdeen. Projects in the pipeline include the Energy Transition Zone Business Park proposed for Aberdeen South Harbour and the Aberdeen Hydrogen Hub. The Energy Transition Zone is expected to accelerate the development of carbon capture technologies and renewable energies, including capitalising on emerging opportunities in offshore wind, as well as greener oil and gas production. The Hub programme has the potential to catalyse growth in the use of renewable hydrogen across the transport sector and lay the foundations for penetration of this zero carbon fuel in other applications such as domestic and commercial heat and industry. This will ensure Aberdeen is at the forefront of Scotland's green recovery whilst demonstrating the importance of the city region to the UK and Scotland's success. Today's report notes that we are well positioned to help green our world. We are fast becoming a destination for focused UK and international investment in alternative energy solutions and markets. If we are to continue to grow our economy, our city region must be an attractive place to live and visit as well as to work. The report states that what draws people to cities will remain a driver of economic activity. By having the foresight to invest in the people and place we have positioned ourselves well for the future. The last financial year saw flagship projects like our redeveloped Aberdeen Art Gallery and P&J Live open. And despite the shadow of COVID, residents joined us in celebrating the changes with a sense of restored pride in the city and optimism for the future. Aberdeen is set to be a gigabit city by next summer. And finally, ours is a green city. Our recent climate change report showed that over the last five years, carbon emissions have reduced by a third, with our own target of 50% by 2030 set out in the Aberdeen Sustainable Energy Action Plan, powering Aberdeen. Amidst the difficult reading in today's report, there are plenty of positives. We have the metal to keep succeeding, and we should take today's report as every encouragement.